Hey pilots, Drain Man here, and today I've got a pretty sweet video. In today's video, we are going to be checking out this all new Champ. This is a Champ stack. It is a flight controller ESC combo packed in a tiny, tiny form factor from a fairly new brand, loaded down with features, and it's it's pretty sick and you may be thinking well why do we need a new brand and why do we need new this and why do we need new that i like what i have and i like what i fly and the price is good and i'm not complaining or you're on the other side of that and you're going hey <laughs> what's new what do we got and that's that's me right there i want to know what's new what do we got what do they have to offer and what is the name well guess what the name is oxbot have you ever heard of oxbot I haven't heard of Oxbot, and this is the Champ, which is short for Champion. So let's check out the Champion. All right, pilots, so here's the deal. They seem to be fairly new. They've been around for about a year or so, and they make two options of their stack called the Champ, and they seem to be the exact same lineup, and they did send me both, and we can take a peek at both if you'd like, but they appear to be exactly the same, except one is running the ICM 4 Two six eight eight, and the other one has the MPU six thousand. As far as the flight controller goes, we are on an STM thirty two H seven. Who knows about the H7? Yes, that is a very, very powerful MCU. And as far as the ESC goes, it is a 60 amp 4-in-1 ESC. So let's go ahead and crack this open. It comes in a nice little box. You've got your QC. You've got a couple stickers. You've got your full-on menu and Q. Oh, Lordy. That is a long, long, long instruction guide right here. <laughs> Look at that. That is actually very, very small. Here's our ESC, also very, very small. And then if we open this up, what do we got in here? Okay, so we've got connectors, we've got grommets, we've got standoffs, we've got our XT60 with a built-in capacitor. All right, I'm gonna come inside the bag and I'm gonna grab the connectors. And I want one for that, one for that, one for that. And look, this one is actually pre-cut and pre-tinned, so that way you can quickly solder up any VTX you want, and it does do plug and play with the DJI 04 Lite. It does plug and play with the HD Zero. This is set up and ready really for the race pilot, but if you, if, if you can race a stack as hard as you want, full throttle, full battery packs, crashing, landing, splashing, bashing, high KV motors, what would be better than that in a freestyle perspective? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And then we're going to go ahead and connect it to the flight controller as well. And it looks like on both you have broken out pads for any reason. If you were to break this connector, you would just solder these up. Not a big deal. Which is a very nice and very important touch. All right, there you go. And then right here looks to be... A jumper whew, that goes on this end Wow okay let's plug this in and if you cannot guess already you are set up ready to go for LEDs and it comes with them okay so this is an 8s capable stack yes this tiny little guy is 8s capable before we dive too deep and do too much because i don't want to get crazy let's take a quick peek and see what we have on the stack so as you can see you have broken out led pads all the way around now we just plugged this in and that's why i did that so you can see you can plug your leds in right here but if you wanted to or had something different, you can actually solder them up right here, which is a very nice touch. All right, right up here, you have all your connectors for your analog camera. You've got your buzzer pads, anything like that. You have a black box chip on board. So that means you have on board black box recording. Something right here that you may not be making out 
is this is actually a battery level indicator. So as you plug in, depending on the amount of voltage that your battery is, you will get that reading on these bars. So right here, you've got two little LEDs right here. One is gonna be your MCU status and one is gonna be your Bluetooth status. Did you catch that? Bluetooth, yes, this feature-packed, tiny little, powerful racing board has built-in Bluetooth. So that means you don't even need Betaflight to set all this up. You can do it right from your phone. All right, so moving right along, right here is going to be the big main bad boy chip. That is your H7 right there. And then there is a sticker on it letting you know which IMU is inside of this board. Right next to it, we have our OSD chip. So if you're going to run analog, you'll have that. Right up here, you've got your Bluetooth chip. And then you've got some different Bex right here. How cool is this? If we were to dive in, and it gets a little glary. It's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on here because of all the conformal coding. Not for me in person, but for you on camera, it's kind of hard to see. But what's really cool is we have LEDs. And that's not very common. Usually we have our jump pads, right? So if you, let's say you had a Beck and you wanted to make it nine volts versus five volts or full battery versus five volts. Normally you just do that and you can use your multimeter and test it and find out or whatever. This actually has LEDs to actually let you know which selection you're on and that it's working. All right, down at the bottom, you've got your receiver tabs and you've also got your analog VTX pads. All right, up here in the top left, you have a healthy boot button, boop, 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 boop. And then you've got your direct plug-in coming across the top right here. That is gonna be for your flight controller and your ESC port connection, which we've already done. We did that together. And uh, underneath it, you've got all your pads if you need to hard solder, like we talked about. If you rip this, if you break this. Over here, you've got a TVS diode protection. That is very, very nice. It's right there. Bloop. That's always nice. Reduce noise, clean up things, make things always nice, you know. Um, it's also a surge protection. So this flight controller, not the ESC, which nice to have on the flight controller, but it's only useful if it's on the ESC2 is a reverse polarity protection. And there's a couple ways you can do this. One is you can make sure that your ESC has P channel MOSFETs. And the other way that you can do this is by having diodes like a shock key diode or something like that. If you have that protection, raise your hand if you've been there before, right? You have connected your battery backwards. And I'm not talking about in the field with XT60 because that's, that's, that's damn near impossible. I'm talking about like on the bench, I touched something I shouldn't have and uh, got the magic smoke, right? Nice touch on the flight controller to have it. You can't beat it, all right? So Type-C USB port, we've already talked about this. Inside of here, you've got all your Becks right here lined up, ready to go. We've got a five volt, two amp Beck. We've also got a uh, switchable, 9 volt, 5 amp, 2 amp Beck. And that one, I'm actually, it looks like it's lower. It's probably right about here. So you've got a Beck here, Beck here. But switchable is nice. That means when you uh, take the pads, you'll have three pads and you'll jump like middle to here gives you 5 volt or you'll unshort that and you'll bridge these two together and that'll give you 9 volt. Okay, so right here, I am noticing that we have an LED control jumper. Ooh, that's a nice touch. So just like we would switch and jump a back, we've got three pads here, right? We can jump the middle to one and let this LED uh, controller be controlled by Betaflight, where you'll select and line out your colors and control everything through Betaflight like you would on any other LED situation, okay? The other option is to bridge these two together, and now this boot button becomes a multi-purpose button, and you can then toggle through your LED colors right with the boot button, which is right here. So that's what that's for. And then last but not least of just basic overview of this flight controller is gonna be down here on the bottom. You've got a Beck 
power and this is Beck B and what's cool about this one is it's pit control and anybody who knows what pit is knows what pit is if you don't know what pit is I'm going to tell you very very quickly this allows you to leave your VTX pad which means wherever you solder your VTX to and that can be DJI that can be HD zero that can be analog doesn't matter wherever you solder it to you can have it where it's on all the time or you can solder it to the pit which is a racing thing which allows you to be able to control that power with a button on your radio super sweet and if you uh, wanted to you can get creative and remap that and do other things on a button I've done it all right last but not least we're gonna jump into this ESC this is a very powerful tried and true and tested Per Oxbot, I have not tested it, and I plan to, and I'll let you guys know the results, but they have tested this 60 amps for a very long time, four channels, that is a lot of power through this little board. It is a 20% smaller board, they are claiming, and it is and appears to be a high quality board. I have no complaints in the construction or the artwork or the uh, uh, soldering. Everything looks to be of good quality. I just can't say for sure until I actually strap a pack and send it to the moon. All right, so now if we take a look, we've got all of our MOSFETs here. If I flip it over, I've got my MCUs, I've got my uh, drivers, I've got everything I need to have a nice, successful ESC. And you'll solder this up, and then you'll also solder the capacitor to it as well. And now, <laughs> you've got more filtering on board. You've got your XT60 ready to go. Short, compact, ready. I mean, this is nice. And they did give you some longer ones if you wanted to go a little longer. So you've got two options here. And the choice is up to you. And you've got heat shrink, and that's pretty sweet. And then look at this, you even get a little 3D printed nut driver. Do, do, do. When it comes to flashing this ESC, which I just made a recent video on the new software, firmware that's being used in replace of BL Heli 32, guess what Oxbot has? They have their own configurator for their own firmware. What? And if you click on it, you can come up here and take a look and let's go ahead and do that really quick together. Look at this. Ox32, your limits defined by you, connect a device, and if I click that, it's actually looking for a device through a serial port, and if I connect, it will let me pick all the parameters of my ESC and then flash them with the latest firmware or whatever right through their own software. <laughs> Step on that, buddy. So that's pretty sweet that they've done that, all right? All right, let's go ahead and look at these LEDs because these are cool looking. And I do like that they come with optional solder pads. They come with some uh, protection by 3D print all the way around, which they don't have to. And watch, I can slide them out. Oh, can I? I can. I can slide them out of their protection. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but if you wanted to, you could. And it says Oxbot on the back. All right, let's take a peek. So I would imagine we're gonna need power, power. So I'm gonna fire up my lab bench power supply and let's see what we got so there's ground and here's power and oh look at that we got red LEDs right there they're actually pretty dang impressive <laughs> all right let's see what happens if I press the boot button okay I pressed it once that did nothing Let's take a look. So you will double click to cycle through the colors. The following six colors will cycle. Red, yellow, blue, green, cyan, which is a bluish, and magenta, which is a purplish. Uh, you can long press for one second to cycle through brightness levels. That's pretty cool. So that's really nice. All right, let's go ahead and double press. One, two. <gasps> one, two. Oh, nice. Ah, oh. and this is the boot button I'm using. Wow, that's that's nice. It's nice. <laughs> it is. It is. 
I can't argue with that. All right, now let's flip it over. Looky here. So what we're looking at on the flight controller in LEDs, which we've already discussed, is we've got our BEX letting us know what selections we have. We've got our MCU letting us know that we've got power and everything is good. We've got our Bluetooth flashing letting us know that our Bluetooth is working and putting out signal. And last but not least, three green bars in color means that we have full battery voltage or 90% plus. Pretty sweet. Now watch, if I turn down my variable bench power supply, we should watch these three green. Can you even see the three green? Okay, you should watch these turn to yellow. Look, there they are, they're yellow. Oh, we're down to red flashing. There it is, yellow and then green. All right, pilots, that is going to do it for the OxBot overview. A very cool stack with very cool features. Absolutely impressive that they fit so much in such a tiny, compact stack. It really is, and it's got everything on it. Conformal coded, Bluetooth list goes on and on and on. And they have their own ESC firmware. Quite impressive. So I'm excited to go ahead and strap this down to a quad and really take it for a spin and really see the part that matters the most. How will it do? How will it perform? And can it take the beatings that they say it can? I'm excited about that. So if you guys are interested in getting your own, I'll put a link down in the video description. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did and I will see you on the next one.